Hey, how's it going? Why would you do that? I always pull before I push to avoid conflicts. Today we're going to learn how to resolve conflicts during rebase without smashing anyone's head into a doorframe. Check out my previous video where I explain how to use automatic rebase to bring latest changes from the main branch into your feature branch. Rebase basically replaces your commits in your feature branch on top of latest commits pushed by your team into the main branch. Sometimes when you rebase like that, you can run into conflict, which isn't a big deal. A conflict is when two team members change the same file or the same lines in the same file. In well-organized code bases, conflicts are quite rare, but they can occur frequently when you shamelessly put all of your code into user class. Don't panic when that happens. When git detects conflicts with one of the commits during rebase, it pauses the rebase on that commit, puts all files of that commit into the working directory, and adds special markup to those files that have conflicts. Each of them will have both your changes and the upstream changes made by your team. To resolve those conflicts, edit those files with your favorite editor, keep the text that's supposed to be kept, and remove the markup. Then run git add to stage the edited files for commit. When all conflicts are resolved, run git rebase dash dash continue. Now let's try this for real. To test the conflict resolution during rebase, I created this sample repository called git conflicts with one file in it. Then I cloned it twice into two separate directories. Um, I've got two terminal windows open. One on the left is the directory git alex and one on the right, the directory git bob. Then I used git config uh, to set the username bob on the right and to set the username Alex on the left so that I can emulate different users committing into the same repository from my local computer. Let's create a feature branch on the right by running git checkout minus b add middle initial. And let's go ahead and add that middle initial. So I'm going to do, I'm going to add a middle to my initializer and I'm going to add first middle initial and then last separated by spaces. Simple enough change stage that file for commit and then make a commit add middle initial and then push it up by running git push origin add middle initial since i pushed it to github it generates the response with the link which i can click and that opens the new pull request window add middle initial so i can immediately create a pull request and in that pull request i see my changes uh, this is what I've done, looks great. The author is Bob, as expected, oh, perfect. Then, um, on the left side, as user Alex, I'm working directly on the master branch because I'm an administrator and I'm arrogant. So I'm going to modify this user file again, but I'm gonna make a different change. In my full name formatting, I'm going to reformat it to, to be last, comma, first, instead. To, so that I can order users by full name, by last name first, for example, if I wanted to. I'm going to save that, stage that for commit, change full name to last first. I'm going to push that up, get push origin master. I'm going to push that directly into the master branch. And let's, uh, let's see what happens. So I pushed it into the master branch and my code on the master branch now has my new formatting. But if I open my pull request, the Bob's pull request, it has the conflict. Now there is a conflicting file, user RB. I can resolve this conflict in here, but this would create the merge commit. And the better way to do it is to use the git rebase. So as a user Bob, I'm going to use the rebase process to resolve this conflict. As we learned in my previous video, first thing you want to do is you want to fetch origin master fetch the latest changes from the master branch to your local copy of the repository. Then you want to run git rebase origin master to run the automatic rebase of your branch on top of the latest master branch. And as expected, conflict, merge conflict in user.rb. Error could not apply, etc, etc. So git even tells you, if you are paying attention, it, it even tells you that you can resolve conflicts manually, then mark them as resolved with git add conflicting files, and then run git rebase dash dash continue. So let's see what git status says. It says that both modified user RB. If I open that file for editing, uh, you'd see this is the special markup 
that get adds when resolving conflicts. And it basically tells me that uh, this is admin middle initial. So the change at the bottom is the change that I made. And the change at the top is the change that came from the head, from the latest commit in the master branch. And at this point, we need to decide what to keep. So we definitely want to keep middle initial and first and last name, but we also want to keep the ordering last name first and then uh, first name. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this. We're going to add middle right here to make it last name, comma, first name, space, middle initial. And then we're going to remove this special markup. And you can do this in any editor. Just open this file in, in, in your favorite editor, be it uh, VS Code, RubyMine, whatever, and then save the file. Once that file is saved, you want to stage that file for commit by running git add user rb. And you can run git rebase dash dash continue. That shows you your commit message that was just rebased. You save that commit message and you're good. So now you've got both on your local system, you've got both the changes that came from, from the origin and the change that you made. So at this point, since you rebased your branch, you, you want to force push. Git push dash f origin add middle initial. So now if you go to your pull request and refresh it, it no longer has the conflicts. That's it. In rare cases when your team made the exact same changes you made, you can end up with no stage changes during conflict resolution. So you'll have to skip that commit by running git rebase dash dash skip. We could explore that in a separate video. Let me know if you're interested in the comments below. It is also possible to run into conflicts multiple times during rebase. This happens when you have several commits in your feature branch that you need to rebase. If your feature branch has a lot of commits, it might make sense to squash your commits into one before rebasing on top of main. To squash commits, you can use an interactive rebase, which I'm going to talk about in my next video. I hope this was helpful to you. If so, press the like button and consider subscribing. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.